Hi, I'm State Representative Megan Schroeder, and we're here in beautiful Warwick Township here in Bucks County to speak with Jennifer Massero. She's from the Penn State Extension, and she's here to talk to us about the lanternfly, this nasty pest that we've been hearing a lot about, and she's gonna inform us a little bit more about where they came from, what we can do as residents to help combat their invasion. So Jennifer, can you tell us a little bit about the lanternfly? Sure, so it's been here about since 2014. It is an invasive insect that came from Asia. Um, it really started in Berks County, so it came in on a wood pallet. We didn't really know what to look for. This is the only place in the United States that had it at the time in 2014. Uh, unfortunately, the egg masses kind of look like just splashes of mud, and so it came in on a pallet through the egg masses, hatched from there, and it's really been spreading since then. Um, they are active hitchhikers, and so they will uh, hitch a ride on your car. Um, they climb up trees or buildings to the tallest point. They launch themselves into the wind and they fly. They're not real great flyers, but that's how they've been getting around. And then mostly, you know, we travel a lot here in uh, the southeastern part of the state. And so um, they lay their egg masses on anything. It can be wooden pallets, rusty metal, and then we move those egg masses to a different area where they then hatch. So it's really been a spreading problem. We're trying to contain it here uh, in Bucks County and the surrounding counties. Uh, we are now in 14 counties that are quarantined. Wow, um, it's a lot. It's a lot, yeah, it keeps growing. <laughs> it's growing. Um, it, it's not good. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> so I know that, um, you know, it, this affected many local farmers. There's Christmas tree sales. Even my own family, one of my family members were upset about possibly maybe having them come in our home. So we watched many YouTube channels about how to maybe scrape them. So could you actually demonstrate if someone finds it um, in their um, property, what they should be doing to help about this? <laughs> sure, sure. So uh, right now they overwinter as egg masses. So there are no adults or nymphs out there yet. So what you can do, I, we scan the tree. We don't see any egg masses here, which is a good thing. But if you did see them, they're just going to look like little splotches of mud. They'll be, you know, maybe about an inch in length. You would just take a scraper card, which we have at the extension office if you ever want one, or you can use a credit card, um, any sort of hard, flexible type of material. You would take a plastic baggie filled with um, hand sanitizer or solution of alcohol, kind of place it underneath of the egg mass, and you would just simply take the card and scrape it into the solution. And the solution is just uh, kind of an extra layer of protection. It'll kill the eggs once they get in there. Or if you're feeling really the need to uh, relieve some stress, you can um, actually just kind of squish the eggs on the tree. They kind of make a popping noise like, like uh. bubble wrap. Uh, if you need that kind of stress relief, you can <laughs> smash them or you can scrape them into a solution of alcohol. Okay, so the yep. alcohol like suffocates them in the Ziploc yeah, and let yep. them go. Okay, yep. that's because I know that a lot of questions were coming even our way, what people can do to get rid of them. Mm -hmm. So you know, you were saying in April, I believe, that is when they start showing. I know that you brought a prop for us to see too what they look like. This is, um, I believe it's probably a third instar nymph or what they call. Uh, so when they start hatching, when the weather starts to get warmer, they will be really small about the size of a tick. They're going to be black with white spots and they go through four stages of nymphs. Um, the fourth one, they're going to be a little bit larger. They're going to be red with some white and black spots. And then from there, when they turn into the adults in late summer, that's when they get to be large uh, with the wings and the brown color that you see. So I know that we've heard people that said that like their whole doorway is completely um, covered in them. So in that yeah. circumstance, what do you, is there anything that deters them that they would stay away from? Any smells, anything we could do as, as homeowners and, and renters of our property to get rid of them? <laughs> So, so that's difficult. Uh, I know Penn State Extension and Penn State University has been doing a lot of research on pheromones, trying to see what attracts them in yeah. and what tries to keep them away. Um, as far as houses, we've unfortunately been hearing a lot from community members that people will try and tell you that you need to treat your home and that they're trying to get into your house and money to, to yeah. make money. And, th and that's not true. Uh, they're not trying to overwinter. They will die uh, at the end of the summer once it, it starts to um, get frost. And so we're just trying to get that word out to educate the residents, you know, to not buy into that um, kind of tactic. But 
Oh, as far as keeping them off your house, that, that's hard. It's hard. I, like, know, it's I, I don't know, aside from, from a hose, trying to keep them off of a, you know, your actual building. Um, yeah, that's difficult. So We're still trying to answer that. <laughs> if they wanted any updates or anything, maybe if you find out more information or as we go and learn more about them too, mm -hmm. is there a website or something or a place they can visit for more information? I don't know if everyone knows where the Penn, uh, Penn State Extension is. Yeah, so our, our website is extension.psu.edu. Uh, we have a lot of information on there for the Lanternfly. There's a bar at the top that says learn to learn more about the Lanternfly, click here. We have a lot of information on there on how to comply with the quarantine regulations, what uh, homeowners can do, what sort of um, trees and um, fruits that they're, they're feeding on, or fruit vines rather, that they're feeding on. Um, what does the tree of heaven look like? Their preferred host. If they're, if you're going to see them oh, on your property good. and, oh, and you have an Alanthus tree, that's where they're going to be. They love that tree for whatever sweet. reason. It's sweet, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that is um, an invasive as well. So um, we didn't do ourselves any favors when we brought it here into Philadelphia. And it is a very prolific tree. Um, they, you know, if you chop it down, you have to treat it. Otherwise, more will will wow. come up around it so that it's been that's been difficult as well so i know that there is something specifically for businesses right i think you brought a, a permit that they need to have i did yes yeah. so every business that is within the quarantine zone and the zone has now expanded to 14 counties so dauphin county was just added but all of bucks county is in the quarantine zone and what that means is any business that is transporting goods, whether it's within the quarantine zone or outside the quarantine zone, they have to have this spotted lanternfly permit. So what you do is you go online, you can go on to extension.psu.edu. You can designate somebody within your company to take the test. You go through um, a series of PowerPoints and information sessions, and then you take a test at the end. If you pass, <laughs> you get these cards, which you are then responsible to go to the rest of your business and really train your employees who are moving goods. So what the quarantine means is you cannot transport any life cycle stage of the lantern fly. So you have to check your vehicle around your vehicle. You have to check any goods that you're transporting to make sure there's no eggs, no active living uh, lantern flies on them. We don't want to spread um, lantern flies from a uh, high population area to a low population area within the quarantine zone and what we really don't want to do is spread it outside of the quarantine zone. Wow a lot of coordination sounds like to go into this. Yes a lot, a lot of coordination we do a lot with the PDA um, they've been very active USDA everybody's uh, pretty aware of this and, and doing their best to try and contain it collaborate about. a lot of collaboration yeah. No, oh, that's great so I guess the last thing would be you know I I don't think they're harmful, right? Mm -hmm. So um, can you expand a little bit about how, you know, they can bite, they don't sting, any of that, so people know not to be afraid of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so the lanternfly's main goal is to um, suck out the nutrients in a tree. So they're not harmful to humans, they don't bite, they don't sting, so, so that's good, that is good. Uh, not so good for your, your tree or your um, cucumber plants or anything like that, but yeah, so they're not gonna hurt you. Um, they do excrete what's called honeydew. Um, so they take the sap or the nutrients out of a tree and then out the other end comes honeydew and that is a really sugary substance which uh, stinging insects really love. So where you have a high population of lantern flies, you're gonna have wasps and bees and things like that. So, oh, so they like will that. sting, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, so that's of particular importance to know uh, just for the general homeowner. Um, obviously, the agricultural industry is concerned too, but the homeowner, you know, you don't want a whole lot of bees in your area and you don't want the honeydew on your patio because it's very sticky and it'll turn into mold. And I think it's really important, Jennifer was here to explain to us, you know, what we can do as community members um, to help this issue in our community. And I'm glad you were here with us. Thank you so yes, much. Yes, thank you so much and, for having uh, me and look taking forward to working an interest. With you more. Yes, thank definitely. you.